British political activist and writer. If you haven't seen him, he's on TV quite regularly on the talk shows, and you need to check out his Twitter account because he's fabulous. I would like to introduce to the stage Benny Oluwole. and told them that Brexit was the way to a better life. And the worst thing is, the people who warned about the damage of Brexit, they were called Project Fear, and we had to, in that discussion, defend the status quo, defend keeping things the way they were. And so the Tories claimed to offer hope. But the beautiful tragedy about where we are now is that the tables have fully turned. Because look at the state of the country. telling you that this, this, is the best you can get. And Jacob rees is even saying that at the end of next year, you just have to accept that there's going to be a 70% increase in the cost of food because we start doing import checks. We are the ones offering cheaper food. The Tories will tell you, they'll have to tell you businesses and farmers and fishing, and fishing workers, they just have to accept and extra red tape, expensive red tape, and all the extra forms they have to fill in. We are the ones offering British businesses a chance to breathe. The Tories will tell you you just have to accept that your rights are being taken away, that you're losing the right to protest, to even be here right now, that you're losing the rights to your voting rights, your rights to work in other countries. We are the ones offering freedom. And the sad thing is, I've spoken to Remainers who are almost embarrassed about talking about Brexit because they feel that it's a middle class issue, that it's, it's almost out of touch to talk about Brexit given all the challenges that people are facing these days. Because that's how Remainers were painted. But my question is, what's out of touch about wanting small businesses to be able to avoid expensive red tape while prices are, are spiraling, spiraling? What's out of touch about wanting more doctors and nurses while NHS is on its knees? What's out of touch about wanting cheaper food during a poverty crisis? The fact is, we already know that we won this debate in 2019. The majority voted for parties that were committed to a second referendum. So if all votes had counted equally, we would still be in the EU. But sadly, the majority was silenced by our voting system, as it always is, time and time again, because the majority has voted for parties to the left of the Conservatives in almost every single election since the Second World War, because we are a progressive voting country. Which means that if in the next election, which believe me, must come soon, if the parties, if the opposition parties work together on the basis of delivering a fair voting system, i.e. proportional representation, then we won't just get the Tories out. We will get a better politics that reflects the progressive voting country that we actually are. on the NHS, that means progressive policies on wealth, on taxes, that means progressive policies on regional equality, that means progressive policies on devolution, that means progressive policies on LGBT, gender and racial equality, that means progressive policies on, on climate change, that means progressive policies on our country's place in Europe. Because we are Project Hope! Coming to the end of our march, I want to say an absolute 
organisers who took part to create this. 50,000 protesters on this march. How awesome is that? One thing we would like to do is to request that you join your local rejoin groups. It's one of the best ways for everybody to work together, get together and organise the next march. If you don't know your local group, if you go on the National Rejoin March page, we can direct you to your local group. One last thing before we go, and I am not going to drag him up on stage because he really doesn't want it, but you all need to make a lot of noise for the man who organised this entire march. His name is Peter Kerr. He's a lorry driver.